All right, um, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 through 9. If you have the ESV Bible, let us hear it all together. And knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his formal um, sin. Amen. I'd like to share a message titled about the you know, partakers of divine nature. I told you already in the beginning that the gospel of Jesus Christ changes us and molds us. When we accept Jesus Christ, our personal Savior, and accept the gospel of Jesus Christ, then what happens is the Holy Spirit begins to live in us. And you know, I told you guys that we have to take the journey together. You know, what does it mean to be a Christian? What does it mean to live a Christian life? And we are talking about that because once we receive the gospel, it should transform us. It should change us. And what happens is that we are becoming more more like Jesus Christ, and we are partaker of the divine nature. The divine nature is living in you. When you accept Jesus Christ, your personal Savior, the Holy Spirit, who is divine, who is God himself, is living inside of you. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit inside of you, then you have to check yourself whether you are saved or not. Because every believer, every believer who confessed Jesus is Lord, they have the Holy Spirit inside of them. Amen. So that is why it is it's essential. If you don't have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, then you have to really make sure that the Holy Spirit is living inside of you. Because I truly believe this. When the rapture takes place, I think it's, this, this is how it's going to happen. When Jesus is standing still in the air, okay? And then what he's going to do is say he's going to call up all the Holy Spirit. And those people who have the Holy Spirit inside of them will go up. Amen. But what happens is that if, you don't, if the Holy Spirit is not living inside of you, you're not going up. You see what I'm saying? You know, it's no use just jumping up and down, you see what I'm saying, to try to go up. But you know what? It's not going to work. You know, when, when, you, when the Holy Spirit is living inside of you, what happens is that when Jesus says, come up all the Holy Spirit, and what happens is that all the Holy Spirit is residing in you, all those people will go up and meet the Lord in the air. Amen. So that is why, if you're a Christian, what happens is that when we accept the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is living inside of us, and the divine nature came in. That is why when the divine nature comes in, we can live like God. We can live like Jesus Christ, amen? That we can become like Him. But you know what? If you don't have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, there is no use to become like God, because you can't. No matter how much you strive, no matter how much you try, you're not going to become like Jesus Christ. You're not going to grow and, and be transformed like Him. So that is why it is essential that we go through the steps. When we accept Jesus Christ, our personal Savior, the Holy Spirit is living in us. And when the Holy Spirit is living in us, first comes faith. When we accept Jesus Christ, our personal Savior, when we accept Him as Lord, when we believe that He is the Lord of our life, and what happens is that when He is the Lord of our life, the Holy Spirit comes inside of us. And then the first step that we take is virtue and knowledge, self-control, steadfastness, godliness, and all those things comes after. Amen? So we, have to, we are going through that process. And lastly, we talked about love. Why? Because God is love. And that is why when we become perfect like God, then we are truly loving. Amen? We can truly love our brothers and sisters in Christ. But not only that, we can love our enemies too. So that is why we have to become more like Him every day. That is the purpose that God has called you. A lot of times that when I see this generation, when I see today's Christian, is that they're not really growing. They're not really being perfected. They're not really being, you know, you see what I'm saying, sanctified in their life to become like Him, become like God. More, more so, like a lot of people, sometimes like, you know, except Jesus Christ, their personal Savior, they go to church. But sometimes they act like Christian, but they're not actually a Christian. Why? Because the divine nature is not in them. So one of the things that I wanted to challenge you is that when we accept Jesus Christ, our personal Savior, the divine nature is in you. That is why we're able to live God, like God. That, that's why we're able to do the things that Jesus has done on this earth. Because in 1 John, it says this, on this earth, we are like Jesus. That's what it says. On this earth, if we're a Christian, then you know what? We are like Jesus. You know, we need to become like him. We need to live like, like him. One of the things, like, when I challenge this thing to the people, he says, oh, you know, there's no use, you know, something. there's just no way that I can, I can live like Jesus Christ. But I want to challenge you, you can't. Why? Because the same Holy Spirit who lived in Jesus is living in you. Amen. Amen. That's why. We can do what Jesus has done in our life. I truly believe when the end time revival comes in our life, then you know what? All of you will become like Jesus. Amen. And you will do what Jesus has done on this earth. Amen. 
healing people, teaching people, preaching the word of God. Do you know that Jesus on this earth did, did three things? One, he taught in the synagogue. Second, he preached the kingdom of God. Third, he healed people and cast out demons. Amen. So, so three things. One is teaching, preaching, and one is miraculous. You see what I'm saying? Casting out demons and healing the sick and all that stuff. I truly believe, when I was reading that in Matthew, you know, I was just praying and the Lord was speaking to me, you know what? You can do that too. We could teach, we could preach the word of God to people, we could encourage other people. It, because of the, the gift that God has given to us through the Holy Spirit, amen? That we could do those things. That is why I want you to have a vision, amen? I want you to really have a vision in your life where that you have a divine nature living in you. We are different, amen? We are different from worldly people because we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. And I truly pray that through the power of the one who strengthens you, you can do all things. Amen. There is nothing impossible because God wants to use that way. That's why I want you guys to be ambitious. I want you guys to really look to that vision that God is giving you and run toward that goal because God is going to use you. Amen. You know, powerfully. Because we're not the one who's doing it. Amen. I want you to understand that, you know. You know, many times in my life, you know, I was kind of thinking about this. And many times in my life that I was just like struggle so much and like disheartened and like, you know, a lot of things happen. And, you know, it was so hard to do ministry and things like that. One of the things that I know is that, you know what, no matter how circumstance surrounds me, try to choke me, try to squeeze me out and things like that, it doesn't matter. You know why? Because the Holy Spirit is living in me. You see what I'm saying? No matter how, you know, things are hard so in, in our surrounding, you know what, that same Holy Spirit who lived in, inside Jesus is living in me and then strengthen me, you see what I'm saying, and empower my life, then you know what, I can do all things, amen. Nothing can defeat me. It does not matter. It does not matter about your circumstance. It does not matter how you, you know, you're poor or rich or things like that. It does not matter. Why? Because the same Holy Spirit who lives in Jesus Christ is living in you and he's going to empower your life if you only put your trust in him. Amen. But you know what? If you don't, then you know what? You're going to be hassled. You're going to be like, you know, um, you know like the devil's going to continue to attack you. Yesterday, I remember, like, you know, devil was just, you know, I, I, I don't know if you guys know this, but when devil really attacks you, he attacks you. you he, I mean, I was so irritated and so annoyed yesterday. Like, you know, it was about one o'clock. I, I just couldn't, I couldn't pray or things like that. I just like, you know, like devil was just trying to oppress me and I just was feeling bad and I was just burst, about, burst open with anger. You see what I'm saying? Literally. And then what happened was that I knew that it was devil's attack in my life. And you know what I do when devil attacks me like that? I start praying in tongue. When I don't, don't want to pray, you know, praying in tongue is just an awesome thing. You know, I love the gift of tongue. Amen. You know, I couldn't fight. I didn't want to pray because, the, you know, devil was just annoying me so much. And then you know what I did? I was just sitting down, you know, before the computer and things like that. I was just, you know, I wasn't even, even rocking and praying. You see what I'm saying? I was just sitting and I start speaking in tongue. You see what I'm saying? And I did that for one hour, all the attack was gone. My soul was revived. I was set free. Amen. Amen. You know why I started praying in tongues? Because the Holy Spirit enabled me to speak tongues. Amen. Inside of me. And that is why I was praying in unknown tongue. I don't know what I was praying, but I know. You know, Holy Spirit was praying for me. Holy Spirit was, you know, strengthening me. And Holy Spirit was praying according to God's will for me. Amen. You know? I, didn't, I did not pray. I said, get me out of this situation. Get me out of this place. I didn't do that. But I know when Holy Spirit was using my tongue and I was praying, He knew the God's will for my life. Amen? He knew God's will, God's perfect will for my life. And what happened is that when the Holy Spirit begins to strengthen me through the gift of tongue, through prayer, one of the things that you have to understand is this. In this life, you are going to go through a lot of troubles. Amen? Difficult situation. But I can guarantee you this. The same Holy Spirit who lives in Jesus is living in you. He will strengthen you. He will empower you. Long as you are following the Holy Spirit and growing, 
from virtue to knowledge, knowledge to self-control. If you are growing in the steps and taking journey with the Holy Spirit, I guarantee you nothing can defeat you. Amen? You always walk in victory. And that's the promise of God that God has given to us when he sent his son Jesus to die for us. You see what I'm saying? That we can be a partaker of divine nature. Wow. That is just so awesome, isn't it? You know? That we can become like him. You know? I want you to understand that we can become like Jesus. We can minister like Jesus. Amen? You know? Don't be succumbed to your circumstances. Don't, don't, don't be oppressed by your circumstances. You see what I'm saying? But you know what? You can overcome them. As you begin to grow in the Lord. Amen. That He will strengthen you. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Devil is so real. I want you to understand that. You know? Devil is so real in my life. If you really want to live a godly life, if you really want to live a life affecting other people and impacting for the kingdom of God, you will receive devil's attack. Amen. This is normal. You know when devil attacks me, I'm, I'm very joyful in a way. You know why? Because I'm doing something right for God. <laughs> That's why he's opposing me. <laughs> Amen? You know? If I live a worldly life or fleshly life, he has no reason to attack you. <laughs> right? He has no reason to attack you. But if you are making an impact for the kingdom of God, I guarantee you the devil will attack you. Amen? And that means I'm, I'm joyful. I'm, I'm happy when he does that because I know that I'm doing, doing something right. You know? Before the Lord. So one of the things that I want to challenge you is that let's go to that place. Let's go to that place of perfect love. And when that perfect love comes, he casts out fear. Amen? That there is no fear in our life. You know, nothing to feel insecure about in your life. You know, because God is going to be with you and God is going to take over and empower your life. Now today, what happened is that if someone is not taking these steps, once they accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, and they're not really growing from virtue to knowledge, knowledge to self-control, self-control to steadfastness, steadfastness to godliness, godliness to brotherly love, brotherly love to love. You know, If you people are not taking steps, as a Christian, if you are not really growing and taking this step, there is a certain danger that comes. And Peter talks about it today. You know, There are so many dangers that is there if you're not really growing. A lot of people struggle with their Christian life and say, what's wrong with it? Sometimes they get so frustrated with Christian life too. And what's wrong with me? But one thing that I can tell you is this. If you're not growing, you are in, tr in, in a lot of trouble. You see what I'm saying? In this life. You know? And that's what Peter was warning too. If you're not, re not really growing as a Christian, and if you're backsliding, there's a lot of trouble and a lot of danger that comes with it. You know? That's why so many people sometimes become a carnal Christian or, or religious Christian. Because they're not growing, amen? Did you know that Pharisees and all the religious leaders during Jesus' time, they knew the Bible more than anybody. They even memorized the whole like, you know, Old Testament and things like that, all the laws. They're experts at it. But you know what? They did not have love for God. They did not have a divine nature, amen? You know? That was the problem. You see what I'm saying? So people can become religious or carnal in their Christian life when they're not growing. You see what I'm saying? So they just come to church. But they don't really believe in God. They don't really love God. That's what happens. So there's a lot of danger that comes when you don't grow. When you don't take this journey, you know, with God in your life. That is why I want to challenge you today to do that. Then what is the danger? First of all, the Bible says is that in... Um, Verse 8, it says, For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being un ineffective or unfruitful in knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The first thing is this, that you know what? It will give you fruit in your life. In John chapter 15, it says that when Jesus commands his disciples to abide in me and I'll abide in you. And then what happened is he said, then you know what? You'll bear much fruit. And that fruit will ultimately glorify the Father. Fruit is what glorifies the Father. Amen? You know? A lot of people say, oh, when we're worshiping, you know, all that stuff. No. More than worship, the fruit of our lives. Amen? Because we're connected to Him. Because we believe in Him. We abide in Him. And He's beginning to work in our life. 
then you know what? We are going to bear fruit, and that fruit will glorify the Father. I want you to understand something. Through the fruit of your life, it will glorify the Father. Amen? When Father is glorified, he, His work begins, and the people around you begin s to change too. You know? And they'll come to know, know the Lord. Amen? That's what's going to happen. You know? When you have this, then you know what? It will glorify the Father. You see what I'm saying? A lot of people say, oh, you know, I'm doing this work. I work this hard in the church and things like that. And a lot of people expect t h i s that, oh, God will be glorified through my work. But it's not true. I'm sorry. When you don't have a divine nature and don't take this journey with you, then what happens is that God is not really glorified. Only through the fruit, you know, that God will be glorified. Then what is the fruit? Okay, in our life. I want to say this. The fruit is transformation. Amen? Do you see the transformation that we talked about? How we become like Jesus more and more? You know? When we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, the next thing that comes is virtue, knowledge. Amen? Self-control, steadfastness, you know? Godliness, brotherly love, and love. Agape. You know? Why? Because we're being transformed. One of the things that I want you to understand is that everybody glorifies God when there is a change in that person's life. Amen? That's a true glorification to the Lord. You know? Nothing else. That is the fruit of our life. You know? A lot of people came to me. A lot of the parents come to me and say, they say that, oh, you know what? After you know, coming to CHD, my kid was transformed. I see the change in their life. You know? And then they realize that God is so real. You see what I'm saying? That he glorifies the Lord. And I said, hallelujah. You know, I say this. Whoever comes and listens to the word of God and really diligently serve the Lord, they receive transformation. Amen? Through this place. I can tell you that. You see what I'm saying? But I'm not talking about emotional transformation. I'm not talking about that. I want permanent transformation. What does it mean to have a permanent transformation? It's this. You know? Be transformed by renewing your mind. It's not emotion. Amen? Amen? Renewing your mind, it has to do with the Word of God. I want you to understand something very carefully about listening to the Word of God, okay? When you lay down your own thoughts and own standards and receive the Word of God and receive new standards from God, then that's what it means to renew your mind. Amen? You know? That's what it means. That you have to renew your mind in order to receive transformation. And that becomes a permanent transformation. A lot of people say, what is repentance? I say this. Repentance is this. It's change of your thought. The transformation of your thought life. Amen? You know? When you have a godly thing s inside, fill inside of your head. And what happens is that you are going to be transformed. But you know what? If you don't do that, then you are not going to be transformed. That's why the word of God is so powerful because it makes a person very stable and committed to God. Amen? And continue to grow. But if it's not the word of God, but it's just the emotion, then I guarantee you, you are not going through a permanent change. It's not a real transformation. That is why every Sunday we come here and then we listen to the word of God and you know, we take the word of God. And what happens is that as we listen to the word of God, we begin to grow. You know? And what happened is that we're taking that step going forward. And we are being so filled with Him in our life. I want you to understand that very, very carefully. We are not changing our action by believing in Jesus. But by believing in Jesus, we are changing our hearts and our mind. Amen? And our action and our words is just the fruit of it. Amen? Do you see it? It's just the fruit. So many people try to change action. Don't change the action. Change the heart. And change the mind. Then you know what? The fruit will come out. You know what's the difference between before God, who is wicked and who is good? You know? The Bible says this in Matthew chapter 12. It says, whatever is stored up inside of that person. It depends on that. Whatever a person is stored up inside, if they store up good things, then that person is a good person before God. 
If this person is stored up a lot of the wicked things inside of them, then you know what? That person is a wicked person. You know? That is why it's so important that, you know, whatever is stored up inside of you, is God changing you? Is, are you going through that transformation before the Lord? Amen? But I want to say this. We don't make the transformation in our life. I guarantee you, you can't do it. And what is the secret? You know? I tried in my life. I tried to go through that transformation in my life. I couldn't. And then Romans 12, 1, verse 1 and 2, there's a new revelation that God gave me. And then I understood. Let's open to that text. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Okay? Verses 1 and 2. If you have the ESV, let us read it all together. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Amen. You receive transformation. You don't make transformation. Only God can change you. Amen? When I was just looking at verse 2, it says that be transformed. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing your mind. I said, what does that mean? What is it? How, how I can receive a transformation in our life? It's not. You don't make transformation in your life. You don't try to change. See, that's what I try to do. I try to change. You see what I'm saying? But no matter how much I try, I couldn't. You know? And I, I said to myself, what's wrong with me? I thought I was a good person. I, was, I thought I was a decent person. But I realized the Bible says to us is that, you know what? You're not a decent or a good person. The Bible says that we're all sinners. You see what I'm saying? You have a sinful nature inside of us. That is why no matter how much I try to make a change about myself, I can't. It's not always good enough. Did you know that in the book of Isaiah it says that your righteousness is like a dirty rag before God. When I heard that verse, I said, oh my goodness. <laughs> Even all my good work that I do before God is a dirty rag. You know? From that point on, I don't try. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But I learned the secret to receive transformation. See, before verse 2, you've got to experience verse 1. Which is, you have to give yourself to God. Amen? Then He makes a transformation. All you have to do is become a clay and give into the Lord. And the potter will form whatever He wants to form in your life. Amen? That's what it is. That's a transformation. We receive transformation only when we give ourselves to Him. Amen? That's all. When you try to make change, you can't change yourself. I, I guarantee you. You know? When you try to form yourself, what happens is that you're forming yourself according to your own image. Not to God's image. Amen? But when you give yourself, God will make you according to His image and according to His will for your life. Amen? Why? He's a perfect God. Then all I have to do is give myself. Commit yourself to Him. That's all. Then let me ask you this question. What does it mean to give myself? I, I was struggling with this question a lot. I struggle with a lot of spiritual questions, believe me. You know? In my life. I struggle with the real issues as a Christian, you know? What does it mean to give yourself? The Bible says yield yourself or give yourself or surrender yourself. You know, the first time I, when I heard that, I was just like, what does that really mean? You know? What does it mean? I, I mean, if, if, if I see a throne of God and an altar of God, and God is standing before that altar, I said, okay, here I go. I give myself, you know, <laughs> to that altar, right? But spiritually, what does that mean? Because I don't see the throne of God. I don't see the altar of God, right? What does it really mean to give myself? 
you know, to the Lord. I completely did not understand that. And as I was, you know, searching through scripture over scripture and, you know, as the maturity adds on through years, like, you know, being with God and things like that, I'll give you one word, what it means to really, you know, give yourself to God, to yield yourself to the Lord. It's this, obedience. Okay? Whatever God is telling you to do, obey. But I want to say it's something about obedience, okay? Okay? If you don't deny yourself, you cannot obey. Amen? If your will is strong, if you're living a life according to your own will and what you desire, you cannot follow God. You cannot obey God. Because obedience has to do with obeying God's will, not your will. Amen? Amen. So I'll give you some basic stuff, what it means to really give ourselves. It's like this. I say obedience, why? Because everybody's kind of different. That's why. What God tells to someone else, he's telling something different to me. Amen? That's why obedience, I cannot just make it as one word, like prayer or, you know, reading the Bible. Because, you know, it, you know everybody is different and according to their vision, according to their calling, that God is giving them obedience is different. That's why. But for me, okay, the obedience and yielding myself for me is prayer. Amen. When I pray, 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 pray all day, <laughs> I'm giving myself to Him. And He does His work through me. That's the obedience that I need to keep before God. There's a lot of great evangelists, like Rainer Bonnke. I heard his, you know, like I'm reading his autobiography right now. Powerful, powerful. You know, you, if, you get, if you want to become an evangelist, I want you to really read his book. You know? His t- book title is Life of Fire. You know? <laughs> wow. You know, very intense. You know, like, Life of Fire. You know? <laughs> but one of the things that I realized is, like, you know, he was giving his testimony. And when he was giving his testimony, I realized something. After he became born again, when he was 10, he went out to the street. And he began to evangelize with his guitar. And he was singing in the street. I'm a 10-year-old kid, you know, singing in the street. You see what I'm saying? And maybe there's a two, three people gather around him. And then one person accepted the Lord. That was his first experience. And someone prophesied over him and said that, you know what, you're going to become one of the greatest evangelists who ever lived. And you're going to go to Africa and evangelize. And when he was 20, he was preparing. He was just being obedient. And then when he was 20, got married. He just, you know, bought a ticket to Africa, to Cape Town, South Africa. And then, you know, he went there. And then he was just evangelizing on the street. That was the first thing that he had done. And then now, massive people, like, through his ministry, 100 million people accepted the Lord. Can you imagine? 100 million? I'm just like, it's just like, wow, you know. Why? Because he was obedient as an evangelist. Amen. That was his calling. Amen. So what does it mean to really give yourself to God? It's obedience. You have to hear God first. Amen. Whatever your calling is, you have to hear him and obey. Then you know what? God is going to fulfill the work in your life and you're going to bear so much fruit. Amen. Amen. And God's going to transform you, change you. But I want to say this. Giving myself basically means praying and reading the Bible. Spending time with God. You're giving yourself, amen, to Him. You know? But ultimately, it is obedience. Whatever God calls you to do. I want to say this. If you really seek God's will for your life, He'll tell you. I always say this in DT. God does not play games with you. You know? He knows his will for your life and he hides it. You know? And he doesn't reveal it to you. That's not the God that I serve. Amen? I want you to understand that. If you really want to know, he'll tell you. He'll give you a vision. If you really want to know, he'll tell you. And he'll reveal it to you. 
But a lot of people, sometimes they're not really serious about those things. Serious about God. That is why I want to challenge you. Okay? If you really want to know, God will tell you. Amen? Amen. Let me hear amen. Yeah. You know, if you don't, if you don't say amen, it seems like you know, all of you are falling asleep or something. You know? <laughs> but you know, one, one of the things that I want you to tell you is that you know what, if you really want to know, God will tell you. You know, he doesn't play games with you. He doesn't hide it purposely. Amen? He's not that kind of God. If you really want to know, he will reveal it. You know? So that is why when you are, you know, like, you know, taking a step forward, I want you to really pray. You know? And to really know. Follow the direction of God. Amen? You know? Don't make, you know, a decision according to your feelings or what you, you think, you know? Because I say this, only God knows the future. Amen? Which means, if you are following and being obedient to Him, I guarantee you, you're going to have a wonderful fruit, wonderful, wonderful result, and you're going to taste that fruit. Amen? And enjoy it. Throughout my life, if I did make a decision on my own and did something, man, I struggled. There's so much pain. You know, life was hard. The result was that. Now, I grew up. I grew out of it. And I said to God, Lord, show me your will. Direct my life and guide me. I always pray about it. And he, he shows me. You know, and when I follow that, the fruit is so wonderful. The result is so wonderful. It's transformation by giving yourself. You're going to have a good fruit, amen? And effective for God. Awesome thing. The second thing is that if you're not growing, let's go to um, verse 9 of 2 Peter. And it says this, For whoever lacks this quality is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his formal sin. The second thing that comes, the danger that comes is this. If you're not really growing, taking this step, the journey, the Bible says that you know what? You are going to be blind. That you don't, you don't see it. You see what I'm saying? You don't see it. We become blind. You know? I want you to understand something. Okay? Is your life clear and you have an assurance in your life that you are doing His will? For you, do you? Do you have that assurance? I want you to understand something very carefully, okay? If you don't have that assurance, then you know what? It's gonna cause you a lot of trouble and sorrow in your life. You know why? Because if you're clear about what God wants you to do, and then you follow that, then you know what? You have faith. You have assurance. Even obstacle comes and opposition comes to you, you can defeat that opposition. You can overcome that enemy. Amen? But you know what? If, you don't ha you, if it's not clear and you don't have assurance for it, then you know what? Am I really doing God's will? You're going to question yourself. There's going to be a lot of doubt. And when there's a lot of doubt, you're going to worry a lot when the problem comes. Amen? But if that is clear and you have assurance for it and you see it so clearly, and that you're not blind. Then you know what? Nothing worries you. Amen. You can overcome that opposition in your life. The problem is, is that sometimes we're so blind, we don't see it clearly. The will of God. And we don't truly understand His word in, for our lives. Then you know what? We are blind. And when blind leads the blind, both of them fall into the pit. <laughs> Amen. You know, people are going astray. There's a lot of worries. There's a lot of fear. Why? Because we're so blind. You know, when blind people walk, what happens? You know what? It's, they feel so insecure, right? You know? We did this test when I was in, in uh, you know, Biola. And then they blindfolded me, and then one of the person has to guide me with his words. You know, I have to completely trust that person. You see what I'm saying? But man, it was so hard. You see what I'm saying? Walking blind. You know, when you're blindfolded, you don't see anything, you know? 
And then the, the, the person who is supposed to guide me doesn't always tell me you know, the right direction. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes you know, he stumbles at words. Oh, oh, oh you know, he doesn't say it. You know? And then I fall into like, you know, like you know, a crack or something. You know? <laughs> Things like that. And I said to myself, man, you know. But when you're blind, you're always insecure. But when you see everything with God's eyes and see clearly everything and have assurance for it, there's nothing you need to be worried about and there's nothing that will make you insecure. Amen? Amen. Even hardship can come. You see what I'm saying? Difficult times can come. But you overcome them. Why? Because you see it so clearly. Amen? You know? One of the things that I want you to understand is that I want you to have a clear vision. I want you to have such an assurance inside your heart. Amen? I want you to see according to how God shows you before your life and so that you can see the future clearly. Amen? How He's taking you. How He's guiding you and leading you. Then you have nothing to really worry about. You know? But if you're not sure, that's where the trouble comes. You know? And let me ask you this, okay? What blurs your vision? You know what that is? What makes you really blind is this. Idols. Something that you love more than God blurs your vision. If there's something in your life that you love more than the Lord, it will blur your vision. Amen? We only see the clear way when we look to God, amen, and worship Him. But if there is something that we love more in our life, then it will blur your vision and you're going to become blind. That's why what happens is that life becomes, you know, insecurity after insecurity, fear after fear, worry after worries. I don't want to live that life. I lived that life in the past, amen? But I don't want it anymore. I know the truth now. You know, when my eyes were open and able to see Jesus, I want you to understand something. Is Jesus clear to you? Do you see him clearly? Then I guarantee you, you will follow him. Amen? But if you don't see him, you can't follow him. Do you see the difference? You know, if you see him clearly, Christian life is so easy. All you have to do is follow, amen? If you don't see him, then you know what? You're going to go astray. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know whether you're following him or not. Let us not live that life, amen? Let your eyes be open. Do you truly love Jesus? You will see him, amen? Are you focused on him? Do you have a single eye for him? You know? Is he the focus of your life? Then I guarantee you, you will see him. You know? Then following is easy. The hardest part is seeing him. Amen? Because we have so much idols in, in our life sometimes that it blurs our vision. And the second thing that I want you to understand is that when you read the word of God, and hear the sermons or hear the word of God, you have to understand it. Understanding has to come before doing. Amen? Because if you don't understand it, then you cannot apply it in your life. So when you read the word of God, ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. I want to say this. I'm not a teacher. Holy Spirit is. You know? When I'm preaching to you guys, when you understand that, it's not me, it's not my eloquence, I know, okay? It is the Holy Spirit in me speaking to you, and the Holy Spirit in you makes you understand it, amen? That's how it's working, you know? Then you know what? You can see it clearly, amen? You understand it. You can apply it in your life, and you can obey before God, amen? But if you don't have the understanding, then you don't see it. And when you don't see it, you cannot live that life. You see? So the true understanding has to come. That's the second thing. To see it clearly. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for the message that you have given to us. 
Lord, we want to be effective for your kingdom. We want to bear fruit that will glorify the Father. But Lord, if we're not growing in a divine nature, if we're not really becoming like him in our life, then you know what? We can go astray. And hardship and struggle will be immense in our life. Lord, we don't want that, that Lord. Lord Jesus, give us a true understanding. Give us a single eye to see you, to look to you, that you may be the focus. Look to, the, look to Jesus, who is author and the finisher of our faith. Help us to look to you in our life. I thank you. I pray all this in your son's name. Amen.